US drone strike kills 16 in Pakistan. A US drone attack has killed at least 16 suspected militants in Pakistan's northwestern tribal area, Pakistani security officials have said. Three compounds believed to be the militant hideouts in North Waziristan near the border with Afghanistan were targeted. The U.S. believes that the attacks were vital to combat militants who operate in the border region. The attacks came a day after Pakistan Foreign Ministry summoned a senior U.S. diplomat in protest at such strikes. A senior U.S. diplomat was called to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and informed that the drone strikes were unlawful against international law and violation of Pakistan's sovereignty, the minister said in a statement. Each of the three compounds targeted in the Friday strikes were hit by two missiles, according to the Associated Press, which reported that 14 people were also injured in the attacks. Three drone strikes have taken place already earlier this week, including a drone strike on the suspected hideout of a warlord on Saturday, which killed five people. Drone attacks frequently target Pakistan's received tribal areas where many insurgents have taken shelter. The frequency of the attacks has increased since President Barack Obama took office in 2008. A number of militants, some of them senior, have been killed in the raids, but many civilians have also died. The U.S. does not routinely confirm drone operations, but analysts say only American forces have the capacity to deploy such aircraft in the region. U.S. officials consider drone strikes too useful to stop them altogether and argue that they're a valuable tool against al-Qaeda and other insurgent groups. Arguments which don't play well in Pakistan. Many people and opposition leaders want the government and military to cut ties with the U.S. altogether, despite the billions of dollars in aid Pakistan receives from Washington annually. Impio's Tayyip Al Jazeera, Islamabad. Super High Vision 8K TV, standard approved by UN agency. A new high-resolution television format has been approved by the UN's Communication Standards Setting Agency. Broadcast in 8K will offer a resolution of 7680 by 4320 pixels, roughly the equivalent of a 32 megapixel photo. That is 16 times as sharp as current HD TVs, offering about 2 MP resolutions. Japanese broadcaster NHK showed off the technology in London during the Olympics where audiences said it gave them a sense of being at the events. The firm has developed three cameras that can capture the higher resolution which it calls super high vision at 120 frames per second. By contrast, the BBC currently broadcasts HDTV programs at 25 fps. The experience of viewing and listening to live sports and entertainment coverage is dramatically enhanced by super high vision and OM envisages it representing the logical next step in TV transmission technology following from regular HD, wrote the consultants analyst Jonathan Duran in a report. In our view, it's a far more significant development than 3D, which offers a limited range of use cases. The UN's International Telecommunication Union, ITU, discussed the standard in May and offered broadcasters the opportunity to file objections because no one did it, sent out letters at the end of the last week confirming the format's approval. A press release from NHK said the specification would reproduce the feeling of life and offer a sense of being present in a way that had been impossible to do before. The news was first reported by The Verge. NHK has used a 145-inch 3.7-meter prototype display co-developed with Panasonic to show off its footage. But it will be some time before such models become commercially available. TV makers are currently focusing efforts on launching 4K-enabled devices, offering half the resolution. This is a format currently used by most digital cinema cameras. LG unveiled the biggest 4K television set to date earlier this week 
An 84-inch screen costing more than dollars twenty-two thousand. But manufacturers are likely to want to offer 8K screens by 2020 when NHK aims to begin its first experimental broadcast in the standard. We'll move on to the business world. Greek Prime Minister Samaras asks Merkel for breathing space. Greek Prime Minister Antonis Samaras has asked German Chancellor Angela Merkel to give his country breathing space following a meeting of the two leaders in Berlin. Mrs. Merkel said she would not make premature judgments and Greece progressed towards meeting its reform targets in advance of an official report due next and did something incredible that inspired millions of people and so um, uh, you, you know I, I, I think um, the charges are, are, are fair and I think he's backing down because he he knows that he would be outed in, in, in public but I also feel like he is a great champion and a great humanitarian and, and that's what makes this so confusing and painful.
Thank <laughs> you.